Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shrini here and this is my channel. So you can just uh, go to the YouTube and just search for this particular channel. So here I'll be creating a lot of free videos on Selenium, Java, Python, Robotics Process Automation, API Automation. So you'll be also getting interview questions from the playlist which I'll be uploading. So it will be very much useful to you if you just subscribe to it and hit the bell to get notifications so that you are always intimated when I upload new videos, you'll be always getting the notifications. So let's get started with today's topic. Today's topic is on Python basics. So we are going to look at the topic of variables in Python. So in my previous lecture, I have uploaded a video where I have shown you all how to install Python and also have taken a very basic introductory session on Python. So with respect to the syntax part, but in this particular session, we are going to focus on variables and how is it that it is different from Java? We are going to look at that practical session. So let's get on to Eclipse. So if you look on to this particular uh, basics.py, the tutorial which we had created last time. So this is going to be a continuation of that session. So I'm going to continue in the same program. So this was a simple print statement. You have seen now how to use it as compared to Java. In Java, you used to say with semicolon at the end, but in Python, we need not do that. We can just simply end the statement. So this is how we would be writing the statement in Python. Now, another important thing in Python is that we have to follow some few rules, right? So before we come on to that, well, let's look at how to declare a variable and we will also compare it with Java so that whoever are Java programmers, they would be also be able to identify the differences between the two. So in Java, we used to say int a equal to 10 right and we used to put a semicolon at the end this is how we used to de instantiate means declare as well as instantiate at the same time instantiate an integer variable right this is how we do it in java right but so this is just trying to understand as if i'm trying to import something from java but no that's not the case i'm just trying to explain here and in python instead of declaring the data type of the variable we you would just be uh, required to just provide the variable name that's it and just give equal to 10 no need to give the data type python is quite intelligent to understand so python interpreter is quite intelligent to understand that it is an integer because the value which you're storing on the right hand side is an integer value so it just looks at the value and it is able to interpret what is going to be the data type of that particular variable so we need not even put a semicolon at the end. So that is the difference between your Python and Java. Another difference if you would have observed is that in Java, we used to put this kind of a double forward slash as the comment, but in Python, we use this hash symbol. So I'll just comment out this line. So this is commented and see there is no compilation error at this particular line because this line was a Java syntax. So we have commented that now. Let me tell you one more very basic part in Python. That is the multi-line comment. Multi-line comment in Java, we used to say this way. We used to start with forward slash this way and we used to end with this way. So whatever sentences or the values which are there in between these two would be considered as a multi-line comment. This is in case of Java. But if this is Python, you have to put it under three apostrophe and end also with three apostrophe that is it so this becomes a comment now in python so this is the difference between python and java with respect to multi-line comments so this was single line comment and this is a multi-line comment and now we have seen with respect to variable as well that we need not declare the data type we just have to mention the variable equal to value what if it is a string that's okay just give a variable name enclose it within double quotes that is it all right if you are having a boolean value right so just say true this is how we do it in case of python we have to put this as a capital it's like a camel case so you have to put a first letter as a capital letter true or false depending upon what value we, we need right and then we can just again print these values in this particular session let's say so here now how do we 
let's say that we, we have to print something right and we are having some fixed text let's say a like this in java we used to use this plus sign to do addition between a string and some other value but in case of python we are going to use comma so that is another difference between python and java so now i'm going to say a right but that's not all i need to print the str and boolean val values as well i'm going to put one more comma i'm going to say str i'm going to put one more comma after this particular value and just going to give the value str again put one more comma boolean val again put one more comma so this is just a very basic lecture guys so that you get comfortable with python so believe me python is not that difficult language to understand or you know get used to even if you know java it is not that confusing it just needs a bit of practice so that you can differentiate between the two of the languages syntax and still be able to do well in both the languages so definitely it's not that difficult or complicated to understand so what is the warnings being shown here so unused import comment yeah so we are not using this kind of comment so we can just take out this line and what is this particular one assignment to reserved built in symbol str so seems to be str is kind of a reserved keyword in case of python so let's try to use some other value like str1 that is it the warning is gone right so now we are going to print this particular three variables so let's run this program so there you go it has given us the output python programming welcome and it has printed the values of a10 and boolean value as true now yeah so this is what i was talking about the built in keyword str so this is some kind of a keyword in python so let's use str1 and let's again rerun the program so there you go so we have successfully executed the program and we've got the output as we desired so this was a very basic level of introduction in this particular video now i will not go too much into detail uh, but just i want to show one more important thing with respect to python so i'll just start off with that particular concept and we will continue in our next session in detail so i'll create one more module and we will call it as python methods so i'm going to start off with the concept of python methods and we are going to look at into that in detail in the next session so just you can click on okay just click on cancel so you can just remove the comments if you don't require it so let's say that we have to define or create a method in python so how we used to do in java was like public return type method name let's say whatever name you want and then the curly braces to right give or define the scope of the method this is how we used to do in java but here there is no such concept like curly brace or scope and all that right here it's quite simple so just for your understanding i'm going to keep this commented so that you can compare when we do it with python so here i'm just going to use this keyword called def this is going to define my method you can give a method name like m1 and you're going to use this kind of two parentheses after that and there will be a colon at the end that is the difference between python and java there was no colon at the end here that is it you give enter now as soon as you give enter you see that the java interpreter has automatically left four spaces here one two three four so if i remove that again i'll show you just uh, remember that it is just below m here so i'm just going to backspace one two three four so exact four spaces is how the indentation goes in the case of python language now you can give your statement as i had created the variables like a equal to 10 give enter then say print a and just print the value of a and that is it now you have just defined the method you have to also execute this program so let's say if you execute this program what will happen there is no output yeah because you have not called this method like how in java we were calling this method m met1 using whatever class it belongs to the class name or if it's a static method of course if it is not a static method we used to create the object right let's say it belong to class 1 then you used to create a object first of class 1 like this right this is how we used to do in java 
and then we used to call obj dot met one right so in python we just can directly call the m1 method we need not worry about any of the other things you just have to use the method name m1 and that is it there is no semicolon anything required just now it's giving an indication to the python interpreter that so this is the scope of this method m1 if you see this minus sign if you minimize it it has collapsed so if you expand it it has expanded and these are the statements which will so these two are in scope for this method m1 so you see this particular area shown these are in scope so there is no need of any curly brace because automatically with this indentation rule python identifies what statement block belongs to that particular method or the parent block All right so now let's execute this particular program so as you can see it has given the output as10 because we are calling the method m1 and you are going to print the value so that's all for this session in the next session we are going to continue from this python basics and see you in the next session so if you haven't subscribed my channel yet i would strongly recommend go ahead and subscribe you will get a lot of free videos on python and you can also be able to understand how python works with selenium or you can use this python language as a base for your data science or machine learning or artificial intelligence so stay tuned see you next lecture